there were certain points that were, um, I thought were gonna be a little uneasy for me. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've never really had um, a mentor, per se, in anything that I've done, you know, from DJing and leading into producing, in terms of a hands-on mentor. However, um, I've indirectly learned from a lot of great people, such as Kid Capri, um, Jazzy Jeff, DJ Scratch, uh, volleyball, and you know, the list goes on. So when you have me in a potential situation where I might have to say, hey, DJ Scratch, um, that wasn't it. You know, like that's difficult because this is a dude that I've been indirectly learning from for 20 years, you know, and, uh, you know, from being, you know, 11, 12 years old trying to learn the rampage scratches and trying to learn so what you say and cut. So I have to sit there and turn around and be like, you know, how do you tell this dude, this dude, how do you critique that when you've learned from him? Um, it was a warm, friendly environment. You know it was competition. Anybody really knew how to conduct themselves, right? There was a healthy respect for each other. So that made it easy for everybody. At this point in my career, I feel like I've seen the top to the bottom. Like, to be in a situation with a bunch of gorillas like these in a competition is extremely challenging. And there's a lot of our peers who didn't have the balls to be here. Myself, personally, I'm not afraid of any man. I think we all go to the bathroom, we all put on our clothes, we all gotta sleep, we all gotta eat. At the end of the day, shorts and a t-shirt, I'll write as much as you, I'll fight you, I'll, whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me. At the end of the day, I'm a gamer. So I wasn't scared about anything. The only thing I was scared about was looking corny on TV. So when I found out what the cast of characters was, the thing that stuck out in my mind was that it's virtually impossible to look corny when you're in the gym with a bunch of other fighters. You know, the reason why I did this show, a lot of people was like, yo, man, you, you, know, you, you, you don't have to get into a, 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 a DJ battle, you're a champion, whatever, whatever. The reason why I signed on to do this show is because there's a lack of information. These kids that watch TV, you know, all these different, different TV channels, they don't know anything past 2005. I was like, if I could go on TV and show a kid that's 20 years old what a real DJ is, I put everything aside to do that, just to show these kids. That's the reason why I'm here. I asked my nephew, what this DJ, what is a DJ? And he said, a DJ is a guy who gets all his friends to rap on his album. <laughs> Now that's scary. It's funny, but it's scary. So I was like, I gotta do this show. I gotta do this show. When I saw the, the names of who would be involved, it was a no-brainer for me because of that reason and because I'm a competitor. I, I need to be in that. That's how I get better. Being amongst these guys, that's, I got better immediately. This, the first day I was in the same room with everybody here, I got better as a DJ. I don't even like to call this a reality show. I call this a TV show, it's smart reality and I'm grateful for that. Um, no Snookies vomiting here. <laughs> Secondly, um, the most beautiful thing that happened to me on the show, which is what I think is important that this show represents, a chance for people to not just learn about DJing, but to come together and learn something new. I had never been in a hip hop club. Sorry, I hadn't. And I love it now. DJ paid for my life. Like, I bought my first pair of turntables from my man right here in 88. That's real talk. I paid for college with my turntables. I paid for my son's expensive ass private school with the turntables. <laughs> Everything I do is bought by way of the turntables. So in, in terms of being um, scared of the talent that's up here, man, you gotta, I, I was born with two balls. I had to put them to the test. I really respect what everybody here represents in the world of DJ culture because we're at a bit of a, a crisis point in our industry. Anybody being popular, standing in front of turntables and saying they're a DJ and taking our jobs away, taking our industry from us and putting myself on the line so that other people can see the difference between famous person X who's taking my check versus me who can really rock the party, I was willing to put, to put myself on the line for that. So this show right here, all it does is just shows that there's a stage for DJs to be seen at instead of it just being heard, instead of you just knowing about a mixtape or being on a radio station, you have a, 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 
an outlet that people could see the good time, no matter where they at. You know, everybody know I come from Def Comedy Jam, and before Def Comedy Jam, you know, they didn't really give a damn about a DJ on the television, you know, or a DJ doing their thing. The DJ was looking at somebody who was on the radio, but that little short five seconds that you see me didn't really justify what Kick and Creek was about, but it justified that DJs are art. So it made it good for DJs all around the world. So that just shows how far DJ has been, where they came from, and where they're going. And I'm just proud to be a part of Master of Mix. I know it's going to take us far.